Hello everyone. I am Professor Anish Vora and I welcome you all in this video lecture. In this video lecture, we will study about speed time curve. We will study different components of the speed time curve and then we will do the analysis of the speed time curve for mainline service. Now let us start with uh, speed time curve. We can define the speed time curve as the speed time curve is a graphical representation of actual run of a train or for any vehicle we can draw the speed time curve. In case of train it start from the one station from the zero speed then for some period it accelerates it reach to its maximum speed and then when next station approach it retards and speed decrease and ultimately the speed comes to zero level when next station or next platform of the station is approach and this is normal characteristic of any train the curve drawn between speed in kilometer per hour and time of train is called speed time curve. On the x-axis we take a time in second and that is a actual run of a train and on the y-axis we take a instantaneous speed in kilometer per hour and then we plot the graph and the graph represent speed time curve. The area under the speed time curve indicates the distance traveled by the train. We have three parameters speed, time and distance. So product of speed and time gives us a distance traveled by the train. And when we do the analysis of the speed time curve we have certain information regarding train traveling is available like a time taken, distance traveled during the run, different speed, we have average speed, we have maximum speed and we have scheduled speed, time of acceleration, time for free run at maximum speed, time of costing, time for retardation. So this all quantities can be available once we do the analysis of speed time curve. In speed time curve we have different four main components like acceleration, free running, costing and retardation or braking. Based on certain factors like a rate of acceleration and retardation, maximum speed, distance between two station, we categorize different Train services like mainline service, suburban service, and urban service. In this video lecture, we'll do the analysis of mainline service. Now let us draw the speed time curve for mainline service and we do the analysis. We have x-axis, on the x-axis we have taken time in second and on the y-axis we take a speed, instantaneous speed in kilometer per hour. We start from the rest position that is zero level and we have acceleration for some period. We start from the O and it reach to 
point A and that is known as a rheostatic acceleration and the time taken to reach from O position to A is T1. Now let us see the acceleration. We have from O to A to B. It is considered as an acceleration. After completion of acceleration or when acceleration becomes zero, it reaches to maximum speed and then free running start. But acceleration is in two parts. The first part that is known as a rheostatic acceleration and the second part that is a speed curve running. We start with a rheostatic acceleration and the time taken that is a T1. During rheostatic acceleration, current is almost constant and voltage gradually increase by stepping up notch of the starting resistance. During acceleration, the tractive effort is constant and that is why the acceleration is also almost constant. Now second part of the acceleration from point A to point B. At point B acceleration becomes zero and train attains maximum speed. So that is point B and that part is known as a speed curve running and the time taken to reach up to maximum speed that is from T1 to T2. So speed time curve running that is from point A to point B and time taken that is T1 to T2. It is known as the acceleration on speed curve. During this acceleration on speed curve, now voltage is almost constant and current gradually decreases with the increase in the speed. When tractive effort exactly equal to the resistance to the motion of train, at that time acceleration becomes zero and the speed achieved that is a maximum. During this acceleration period, the rate of increase of acceleration decrease and ultimately at one stage it becomes zero as the speed increase. So on the speed time curve we have seen that uh, from point A to point B it is a speed curve running and time taken that is T1 to T2. Now next stage that is a free running from point B when acceleration becomes zero and train has achieved maximum speed then from point B to point C it is a free running and time taken for free running that is the maximum and that is from T2 to T3. From point B to point C that is a free running, acceleration is zero and time required that is T2 to T3. Here we have constant speed, acceleration is zero and almost constant power is drawn by the train. At point B it has achieved maximum speed and at maximum speed train runs during free running. When next station approach at point C it start uh, costing. So at point C to point D it is known as a costing. 
and the time required for costing that is from T3 to T4. So costing is uh, from point C to point D and time required that is uh, T3 to T4. When next station approach at point C, the power is cut off to the locomotive and the train runs on its own. It has a momentum. So slowly speed decrease and the costing period that is uh, from T3 to T4 and uh, from point C to point D. As we discussed, power is cut off at point C, so train is running without power. The rate of decrease of speed during costing is known as a costing retardation. At point D, we apply the brake. So from point D to point E, is known as a braking and speed becomes zero at point E and time required for braking that is T4 to T5. It is known as a retardation or braking. From point D we apply brakes and to reach to point E speed decrease and ultimately speed becomes zero. Total time required that is from T4 to T5. This speed time curve is known as actual speed time curve because it includes all the components of speed time curve. Now let us revise the entire speed time curve for the mainline service. As usual we know that on the x-axis we have taken time and on the y-axis we have taken speed in kilometer per hour. It starts from the rest position and from point O to point A is known as a rheostatic acceleration. It has a constant tractive effort during point O to point A and acceleration is also constant. Time taken for rheostatic acceleration that is T1 from point A to point B it is known as a speed curve running. The rate of increase of acceleration decrease with the increase in the speed. At point B, it reached to maximum speed and time required that is from T1 to T2. At point B, the train has attained maximum speed and then free running or with zero acceleration with constant power, train will run and that is known as a free running from point B to point C and the time required that is uh, from T2 to T3. When next station approach at point C, the power is cut off, the train is running without power, train is running on its own momentum and the speed start decreasing from point C to point D. Speed is decreasing and it is known as a costing. The train is running without power and the time required for costing that is T3 to T4. When next platform of the station is approaching, brakes are applied at point D and speed decrease and it reach to zero speed at point E and the time required 
that is uh, from T4 to T5. So this is entire speed time curve. We can do the analysis of uh, any type of uh, train. Currently we have considered main line service. The area under the speed time curve that indicates the distance traveled by the train. So thank you for watching my video. Keep watching. Thank you very much.